Hello there. So today I am sharing with you my Holy Grail makeup products. These are my current ride or die makeup products in my life, subject to change at any time. You guys have been asking me for a long time for a Holy Grail makeup products video. I have never done one on my channel, so I thought it was about time. So let's go ahead and get into my ride or die makeup products. I'll start with primer, and now I know that some of you who've been following me for a long time are not gonna be surprised by some of these products, but some of them you might. Now this one is one that should not come as a shock to any of you. This is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I adore this. I have it in the two ounce size squeezy tube instead of the one ounce bottle. There's even a travel size bottle. So I'm gonna be 45 in August. I have oily combination skin. I live in a super hot and humid climate. And when I'm talking about face products in this video, throughout this video, I need things that are not gonna settle into or accentuate fine lines and wrinkles. I want my pores to be blurred, but I also need things that are not going to make me shiny throughout the day, yet not accentuate any dryness that I might be experiencing on the perimeter of my face. So that's where this comes in. I love this because it's a lotion type primer that sinks right in. It does a great job of smoothing out the pores, which a lot of pore filling primers do, but they don't control oil well, and this does. This is also water repellent, so if you live in a hot and humid climate and can kind of beat up with sweat a little bit. This does a great job of keeping your makeup on and keeping it looking good through all of that. It just works so beautifully with any foundation I pair it with. And it's great for my sensitive skin. I've tried a lot of primers and a lot of them don't agree with my skin. This one does. Holy Grail. I just did a video on my Holy Grail foundations for various foundation types. So that is a companion video to this video. I will have it linked for you in the description box as well as at the end if you want to check that out because I couldn't pick just one for this video. But what I am gonna mention here in this video that does go along with foundations as well as skincare is the Drunk Elephant D bronzy anti-pollution sunshine drops because this is a multi-purpose holy grail product for me this is my second tube of this i have used this in so many ways to deepen up foundations that were too light for me i can mix it into skincare i can mix it into foundation it's just a beautiful beautiful product that doesn't change the texture of whatever you're mixing it into it's also got antioxidants and omega fatty acids in it so it benefits your skin as well so i had to include this in this video for sure so when it comes to hiding the imperfections on my face you know post foundation or in lieu of foundation i have a few things i use for different reasons. The first is a corrector underneath my eyes. I use a corrector either instead of using an under eye concealer and almost every time I use an under eye concealer I put a corrector under it to counterbalance the discoloration underneath my eyes. Otherwise a concealer can look a little gray sometimes, you know what I mean? The one corrector that I love more than any other corrector out there is the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 Corrector. I have been using this for probably two years. I have a few others that I really enjoy, but this one just keeps sticking around. Now, I know a lot of people do apply it with the applicator. I typically use a teeny, teeny, tiny amount and just split it between my two fingers and tap it in that way. That just works best for me. I like the peachy tone of this one, although they do have multiple shades now. It gives me targeted SPF right around my eye area, the crow's feet area, where I would normally not want a mattifying SPF sitting because this area for me is dry. It also has anti-aging benefits. It's very hydrating as well. It just gives me exactly what I need for that delicate under eye area. I really tried to just give you one 
concealer, but you guys know I am nuts about my concealers and I'm also very picky. So I have two here. I have one that is more of a multi-purpose concealer for if I need to just bring one somewhere and use it for my face and under eye area and have very full coverage. And I have a second option that is not as full coverage for a daily look that will still cover nicely, but not be, you know, full, full coverage. So the first is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I've talked about this a lot on my channel. I love it for face concealing. I love it underneath the eyes. It is more hydrating than Shape Tape was, yet it covers as well for me, especially if I use it over a corrector. This is 0.5 ounces. You get so much product in here for the money. And this is great for daytime as well as just special events at night. So for a second, Second option for those of you who just don't want full coverage but want a really nice concealer that looks like skin and can still cover on the face and the eyes if you want to, I chose the Dior Forever Skin Correct. I had a hard, hard time picking between this and the Armani Power Fabric because I really, really like that concealer too, but in the end, I went with this one. I blend this out with my fingers most of the time and I feel like it's just a beautiful concealer. It's actually the concealer I have on today and I just feel like it does a great job at concealing but not looking overly obvious like you're wearing concealer. It just kind of evens everything out nicely and neither of these emphasize any under eye wrinkles or creases and they don't settle into fine lines or wrinkles as long as I set them properly. Before I continue, if this is your first time here or if you just have not hit that subscribe button yet, I would love it if you would do so and become part of the family. I know a lot of you watch my videos and just have not hit subscribe or hit the notification bell so that you don't miss my uploads. And that really not only helps my channel out, but it also helps you guys be notified of when I upload. Now, if you are one one of the lucky ones who doesn't need under eye concealer or if you just want a separate face concealer from your under eye concealer the face concealer that I use the most often is the NARS soft matte complete concealer I love this concealer I think everything about it is absolutely fabulous I can use a tiny bit and get exactly the coverage I need the shade that I have is perfect for me I'll put all my shades down below as well for you and I do have both my foundation as well as my concealer shade match list in my description boxes so that you can see all of my matches in foundations and concealers on my blog. But this is so, so great for a face concealer. I don't like it under my eyes because it is a little bit drying, but it settles really well and melts into the face beautifully. So this under eye setting powder has replaced all others for me <laughs> ever since I discovered it recently. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I have it in the lightest shade, the white shade, because I find it's translucent and I don't like having anything tinted underneath my eyes that can change my concealer shade. Now I don't like this applied with a brush, but pressed in with a damp sponge, it is beautiful. It looks like nothing and it doesn't allow my concealer to crease at all during the day. I do have a video on how to apply setting powder. I will link down below for you if you want to see how I set my face and my under eyes and also use finishing powder, which I'll talk about here in a minute as well. My absolute favorite setting powder for the face or the under eyes, if you want an all-in-one that does both absolutely beautifully, is the Nakia Joy Velvet Finishing Powder. I know it says finishing powder, but it is a setting powder and it is stunning. It works for all skin types. It looks beautiful and natural on the skin. It is amazing at how it minimizes and blurs pores. But not only that, it controls my shine longer than any other powder, but it doesn't look like powder. I've heard from a lot of you, even with dry skin, that you love this powder as much as I do. She has ingredients in here that help condition and hydrate the skin. It's really finely milled. It's 100% translucent. It has no artificial fragrances in it. So it's got this light vanilla scent that a lot of people think is fragranced, you know, artificially. It's not. It's fragranced with natural vanilla. Everything in here is good for you. It's just a beautiful powder. I have two of these in backup. I cannot quit this 
powder. And I do have a video on setting powders and finishing powders. And you guys know from that video, and it may have even been in another video where I talk about my favorite finishing powders. And you probably already know that this is it. This is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. I have the shade Medium Plus. If I haven't said shades, I will list them down below for you. And this little waffle shape here is where I've hit pan. I use this a lot as the last step of my makeup. I have other finishing powders, but this is one that I use because I feel like it doesn't add a lot of color, but it blurs everything. It makes everything look really airbrushed and beautiful without looking or feeling like powder, or looking heavy. It's a really, really pretty product. There's just something about the finish of this one that I really love. It's not too luminous. It's not too matte. It's just kind of that perfect in between. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into face palettes because why not? So a few of you may have heard me talk a few times about the Smashbox Cali Contour Palette. It is, in my opinion, the perfect face palette. Now I think they had or have this in a darker shade as well. If they do, I will link it down below. This is the original shade. The reason why I like this is because you can use it on the face or on the eyes and have just a perfect all-in-one palette. This contour shade is perfect, not too gray, not too warm. Before I get into the highlight shade, I just wanna go ahead and address that the quality of the powders in here, it, it, it's just great. I mean, you really cannot beat it, which does kind of lead me into the highlighter. It's not powdery looking, it just looks stunningly beautiful, like a beautiful sheen on the cheek. The bronzer is a nice light bronzer, it's not too orange. This is such a great shade on pretty much everyone I've ever seen it on for a blush. There's a deeper highlight shade you can use on the eyes or the face. And then this is a highlighting powder. It's just really versatile. If you're looking for an all-in-one travel palette, anything like that, it's really just perfect. Speaking of contours, this Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in Medium, hands down holy grail sculpting powder as you can tell i do have one in backup but i am refraining from opening it until this is all gone this is just the perfect shade of contour to give you that shadow look that you need from a contour and it lasts forever you know you just don't use contour all over your face so for the use that i've gotten out of this uh, you know, this has been completely worth it. Holy, holy grail shade. The quality is perfect. I love this. I chose this powder blush because it is the one that I reach for the most for any occasion. It's flattering. I just, I love it. It makes me feel good every time I wear it. I feel like it just amps up my look somehow without being obvious. I don't even know how to explain it. This is the Tom Ford cheek color in the shade Inhibition. I know Tom Ford, but I just, I could not not pick this shade. It is the shade of blush I have on now. I feel like when I want to feel good about myself, really, really good, this is the blush I choose. And I have a lot of other great ones that I love, but this one is the one that stands out. It just is. There is something so flattering about this shade. It's got just enough rose, just enough peach, just enough pink, just enough neutral to it that it works. It works for anything. So holy grail. So I've done a lot of videos on drugstore makeup that's as good as high-end and holy grail drugstore products. I know a lot of products in this video are high-end, but I do have drugstore videos as well. So I will link that playlist and some of those videos down below if you're looking for more drugstore products. I do love me some drugstore products, but these are ones that just really stand out to me that I just reach for. And they're not all like Tom Ford price, but I know that there's not nearly as much drugstore in this particular video as there is in some of my other videos. So that said, my bronzer that I adore is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze in the shade Tantastic. You get 25 grams of product in here, whereas with most other bronzers, you get like six to seven grams. It's a lot. So you do truly get what you pay for, but the shade of this is just perfect. I did, you know, top over my powder, my setting powder with this bronzer, and I just feel like it always looks, you know, warm, but not too orangey. It's just neutral enough. I love the big mirror. It's just, 
easy and it never looks powdery. It's a great, easy, beautiful formula. It's a great color and it's gonna last me forever. I use this all the time and it is just still going. The Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder Highlight in the shade 01. I feel like this is a great highlighter for people who might be a little bit intimidated by highlighters or maybe work in a professional environment and don't want an obvious highlighter because it can be applied very subtly and not look over the top, but you can also build it up if you want more of an effect. It's also that perfect champagne shade. You know, I have some highlighters that are just, you know, beaming from outer space, but really smooth and I have some that are really really subtle that don't build as easily this one kind of gives me the best of all worlds depending on how I apply it and it's my preferred shade I like a champagne highlight versus a white or a gold highlight I just love it I just talked about both of these next products in my monthly favorites and fails because they're kind of new so let's go ahead and talk about this Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. I think it is so perfect because it is a cross for me, or a blend rather, of using something like MAC Fix Plus, which takes down the powdery, cakey look of your makeup, and a setting spray, which locks everything into place. Now, is it what I'm gonna choose when I need a mattifying setting spray? No, I'll put that down below. But for now, this is what I'm using because it doesn't look overly dewy. It doesn't look overly matte. It just gives me a naturally radiant finish. I adore everything about this from the fine mist to what it does for my makeup. And I have been in some hot weather with this with a mask on. I am loving it. And that leads me to the Hourglass Veil Eye Primer. I think this is so good. You know, a lot of eye primers, even if they're really good, I find I do have to still set them with some kind of a powder to lock them in place so that my eyeshadow won't crease. Maybe that's just my eyelids, I don't know. But with this one, I don't have to do anything to it if I don't want to, and I can still blend out my eyeshadow. And as someone who really likes wearing cream and liquid eyeshadows, I like that because if I do have to set an eyeshadow primer in place with powder, when you apply a cream or a liquid over that, it changes the texture. And that doesn't happen with this, but it helps those liquids adhere even better. Another thing is that a lot of eyeshadow primers, if you don't have to set them down with a powder, they emphasize dry patches on my eyes or they make my eyes look more textured and wrinkly. This doesn't. It looks so smooth. It kind of evens everything out without adding color without, you know, concealing, which that would make it a little bit better, I guess, if it actually, you know, concealed the redness or whatever. But it's still, I, I just, I love it. This kind of does everything that I want it to, and I really wasn't expecting it to be that great, but it is. So I don't have my Holy Grail brow pencil here. I will try and find some kind of a screenshot. It's the Hourglass Micro Arch Brow Pencil. The reason why I love that brow pencil is because it's shaped kind of like a hyphen, but it's smaller and skinnier than other brow pencils that I have. So I'm able to mimic brow hairs very, very easily and have a natural looking brow very, very quickly because it's shaped more elongated than just a regular slim pencil. I love the shade Ash for my particular brows. I like the way it lasts. I just like everything about it. I just don't have it with me because I tried to replace it with something else when the Sephora sale came around and I don't like that product as much. And for a tinted brow gel, I really like the Maybelline Precise Fiber Volumizer in the shade blonde, but I think that they are discontinuing this or they have already. Unfortunately, I just, I really love this. This works really well for my brows. I need to investigate other tinted brow gels. I just prefer to use a slight tint that's a little bit lighter. I feel like it looks a little bit more natural and softer when I do that. If you guys have any tinted brow gels that you love in particular, please leave those in the comments for me. I am all ears. I am trying to find one. This next category was really, really hard for me to just choose one holy grail. <laughs> really, really hard. It is the cream liquid stick shadow category. I know this is not going to be a surprise to any of you, but I settled on Armani eye tints in cold copper and rose gold. 
This is the new packaging. This is the old. I still have two in the old packaging of Cold Copper. I have other stick cream and liquid shadows that I absolutely love. But when I think about just throwing on a one and done, smudging it out and having it look really beautiful and special, either alone or with other things, these just come to mind very quickly. So I have on Cold Copper today on my lids. It's just easy and it always looks good. And it's flattering on so many different skin tones. I don't know. So that's just what I ended up going with, even though I have so, so many others that I could have gone with. But, you know, I got to choose a holy grail. And so this, this one. For eyeliner, I chose, without question, the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliners and I specifically chose one shade which is kind of weird for me but the shade demolition is kind of perfect if you're wanting something to go with warmer or cooler shades it's kind of a cross between a deep smoky charcoal and a brown I, I just find it to be super versatile I have a lot of browns that I love and some grays but when I think about the one shade out of the Urban Decay 24 sevens, it's the most versatile that I tend to reach for the most. Demolition came to mind first. And I love this formula because it does glide on so, so smoothly. It never skips. It gives me time to smudge it out before it sets if I want to smudge it. And it lasts all day. It just doesn't budge. I adore these. I don't even know how many shades that I have, but I just keep buying them because I love them so much. I feel like I could have chosen several for this category too. This is mascara, and I've not forgotten about lips and eyeshadow palettes. I'm getting there in a second. The Hourglass Caution Mascara is just what comes to mind when I think of the mascara that I tend to reach for the most when I want something that is not going to smudge, it's not going to flake, it's gonna give me those you know, thick, voluminous, long lashes that look good for any occasion. Depending on how many coats I wear, I can wear it for daytime, I can wear it at night. It's just a great mascara for, for anything. Now I can wear this on my upper lashes as well as my lower lashes, but I do have a favorite lower lash mascara, which is the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash. I prefer this on my lower lashes because it is a fiber formula and it never smudges on my lower lashes. I also really, really like the fine wand. I feel like I have less, you know, margin of error if I use a really tiny wand and it's very long so I can get more of the area on the lower lash line. I just really like it. I've tried others. I've tried drugstore, and this is the one that I always end up going back to. Okay, so my Holy Grail lip liner is a recent discovery, and I've talked about it a few times since I discovered it, and that is the Pat McGrath Labs Permagel Ultra Lip Pencil. I only have one shade of this. It's in the shade Buff but I intend on getting more shades. If you are someone that likes to overline your lips or even them out, this formula is perfect for that. It's kind of thicker, but it glides on so beautifully and it does kind of fill in your lip lines a little bit. I don't, I don't know how it does it, but it does. It has good stickability to it. So if you wanna go with just a lip pencil, and throw on a little gloss. This is kind of the perfect lip pencil for that. I really, really love the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners, but this formula is creamier than that and it lasts a little bit longer than that. Even though I still love Charlotte Tilbury, this one has moved to holy grail status. As I was putting products together for this video, I realized that I probably need to do an eyeshadow palette video, like a top five or a top seven eyeshadow palettes video. Let me know down below if you would like to see something like that because I had kind of a problem picking out eyeshadow palettes. I actually have two here. So when I was thinking about holy grail palettes, I mean, that encompasses a lot, right? I mean, I have a lot of palettes that I absolutely love for different reasons, big ones, small ones, Ones, travel ones, multi-purpose, neutral, you know, all that. But then I started thinking, you know, what are the palettes that I reach for the most when I am maybe working with other palettes or on their own or, you know, the most for nighttime looks, the most for daytime looks that I just really enjoy reaching for the most. And I pulled from these two. And then after I opened them, I realized they seem to resemble each other but they really don't. So this is the Natasha Denona Biba palette, and this is the Persona Identity palette. So you have two very different price points here, and they are both neutral palettes, but in different ways. And that's kind of why I chose them, because you know, I'm a neutral girl. Let's just 
call it like it is. I just prefer that day in and day out. First of all, the formula in both of these is just perfection. I mean, you cannot go wrong with either of these. Now you're gonna get various formulas in Natasha Denona. Some of these are gonna seem very sheer. You're gonna wonder what the heck you're doing, but then when you actually apply them and start playing with them, you're like, oh, Oh, okay, that's what that's for. The Persona shimmers and mattes are super high quality. I mean, both are super high quality. Now the Persona, I feel like you have such a variety here of shimmers to choose from. I've gotten such special nighttime looks from this palette, but I can get very, very lovely, beautiful daytime looks from this palette as well. I just feel like I'm always inspired with this palette. I absolutely love it. I love using it. The Natasha Denona palette to me is just such a great neutral palette to have because you can get the cool looks from that bottom row. You've got the neutral, you've got the warm. It kind of gives you everything you need from a neutral look, but I don't get like the super special night looks from this palette like I can get from this palette. So that's why I had to include them both. Sorry, I know that is probably against the rules, but you know, sometimes it's okay to have two favorites, right? And that leads me into lipsticks. So I do have two formulas here. I just could not choose. You guys know I am just nuts for lipsticks and lip glosses. I haven't even gotten to the lip glosses yet. I do only have one. I picked one holy grail of lip gloss. But I was thinking about how much I love the various formulas of Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. And I pulled two shades out. I have Naked and I have... Oh, hey, Luke. <laughs> I have Naked and I have Ex-Girlfriend here. And I have one in my purse called Love Light. And I love that they have the various formulas to choose from. They have mattes. I know they have other formulas too. And they have so many shades to choose from. And the price point is really great for the quality that you get. I have other shades in my Urban Decay Vice collection, but these are the ones that stand out to me. So when I'm looking for sheer, I go for Ex-Girlfriend or Love Light. And Naked is just one of my holy grail pinky nude neutrals. I just love it. But there's another lipstick formula that is ride or die for me. I can't live without. I just love the way it makes my lips feel. I love how long it lasts. I just love, love, love it. That is the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Formula of Lipstick. And I have four shades here that I reach for a lot that I love. I just feel like they are perfect for me. The one that I have on my lips today is In Love with Olivia. I am also showing you Glowing Gen, Bitch Perfect, which is one of my holy rail lipsticks of all time, and Dance Floor Princess. I love all of the shades of lipsticks that I'm showing you here. I don't think any of them are too, too similar, but I'm usually a nude lipstick girl, and all of these fit the bill as far as comfort, and longevity from a bullet lipstick and just the way they make my lips look. You know, not every lipstick makes your lips look good and I feel like all of these here do. I was a little overwhelmed when I had to pick a holy grail lip gloss. I had so many that I could choose from. There are some drugstore lip glosses that I just absolutely love. There are some high end. And in the end, I landed on Persona. I feel like this is something that Persona really, really shines with. I love the flat applicator. I love that all of her shades are kind of basic and have a purpose. I feel like you can easily look at every one of her shades and say, okay, that is what I would wear for this type of a look. You know, there's a lot of lipsticks out there that are, you know, kind of translucent or, you know, a blend of a few shades. And these are perfect to wear alone or to pair with a lipstick or a lip liner or what have you. And the formula is just really comfortable. It's not sticky. It's not too thin. It's not thick or goopy. And I do feel like they last a decent amount of time for a gloss. I mean, gloss is not made to last a long time on your lips, but these are just a really beautiful formula that I reach for a lot. I love every single one of these shades for different reasons. I've done a Holy Grail brushes video and a Holy Grail foundations video. I'll have those videos linked for you if you haven't seen them, as well as my favorite drugstore products. I know there's going to be some of you who are going to want to see that. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!